And good afternoon, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to another Art to Market broadcast. Uh, today is Tuesday, June 9th, 2015. I'm Jason Horsch, owner of Xanadu Gallery and publisher of red.blog.com. And I'm Barney Davey, publisher of artmarketingnews.com and numerous art marketing books. Hi, Jason. It's good to be with you, Barney, uh, as always. Good to have everyone uh, here along with us, whether you're watching in the live session uh, or watching the recording after the fact. Uh, good to have you here. Um, and as usual, I, I think we've got a great uh, topic of conversation today. We're going to be talking about um, how to assess your art marketing skills and resources so you can build a more successful business. And as Barney and I were talking about this, this was one of the topics that um, you know, we do a calendar of the year's topics. And, and uh, as we were preparing for this several weeks ago, we looked at this one and said, hmm, I wonder what we were thinking when we wrote this, this uh, topic idea down. What, what, what do you think the thrust was? And, um, you know, I, I don't think either of us could remember exactly what the, the, uh, the concept behind it was, but the more we got talking about it, the, uh, the, the more exciting it seemed to talk about this subject. Um, and, you know, a lot of times in these broadcasts, we'll get in and, and get into some pretty minute detail on particular issues using Facebook or blogging, um, you know, and kind of drilling down deep. And this is a subject that, that's kind of taking us a step back and, and looking at a much um, kind of a broader range of, of issues for artists. And so we'll look forward to, uh, uh, to, to getting this conversation going and, and to hearing from you. Um, as usual, if you have uh, questions or comments like to be a part of the the conversation today um, there are a couple different ways that you can do that um, uh, you can uh, there's a Q&A uh, that you'll notice if you scroll over the video window you can open that up and type questions in we'll see those um, kind of as a chat uh, during the session of course that only works if you're here live with us uh, you can also post a comment on red dot blog or you can email me your questions and comments at jason at xanadugallery.com. Um, uh, plenty of different ways to, to get, a, get in touch with us if, you, if you'd like to participate in this conversation. And we'll try and get to um, uh, as many of your questions as they relate to this topic as we, we can during the conversation. Uh, so Barney, um, I guess we just uh, dive in and, and get started and talk about this, this question of marketing skills and, and resources. Um, you know, I, I think every artist knows that they need to be putting forth effort um, and, and need to be um, putting some resources towards marketing and promoting their work. But I think that um, for a lot of artists, it seems like a big nebulous um, moving target that's very hard to pin down and hard to figure out how to allocate your resources, and what skills you might need. So um, why don't we just begin by, by talking about, um, you know, what, what some of those key uh, marketing skills and resources would be. Okay. Obviously, everybody has uh, a different situation. There won't be any two artists that have exactly that things line up the same way for them. Some may have more money, some may have more marketing experience, some may have help in the form of personnel or uh, something else that, that's a, a benefit for them. So that's why when we started talking about it, I thought, and I, and I go through this with my art marketing mastery course too, that you really do as an artist and, and any, as any small business person for that matter, you need to be able to be honest with yourself about here's where I'm at. At this point in time, I have this much money to put into a, a program or I have these kind of marketing skills that I can use or I'm weak um, in this area and I need some help. And until you have your, a, a grasp of where you're at currently, what your current situation is, you really can't make good decisions about what to do next because if you if you jump into something and you don't have adequate resources it can turn into uh, uh, something that's negative and puts you in a downward spiral that'll throw you off your game for a long time conversely if you jump into things where you have some strengths or you bring in you recognize i have some weaknesses and i need to shore them up if you 
if you know that in advance and, and, and bulk up on those resources where you need some help, then you can attack things and expect a, a better result. So bef before you make plans, you really need to know where you're at. You can't go into battle and not know, do I need tanks? Do I need artillery? Do I need aircraft or, you know, whatever. You, you, you can't make this up on the fly and expect to have good results. So I, I think that was the, the genesis of the idea that we came up with long ago. And I'd start with this one, Jason, and that's personnel, because it's, it's all across the board. I know you've seen it in your own personal experience with your parents and the way, the way they work together over the years to help build an art business around your father's art. And I've certainly seen it dozens and dozens of times where uh, an artist who has a spouse, close family member, a, a good friend, or somebody who works with them has a leg up. It's, and it, that is just luck of the draw, nothing more than that. Does the, do the stars line up for you and, and, and it works? If you do, that's, that's a good thing. If you don't, then maybe that's where we should talk a little bit about what do you do if that's not your situation? If you are the, the solo entrepreneur without any help, what's, what, is your, what should you do about looking for personnel? Any thoughts on that? Yeah, and, and certainly, um, just as you said, I've, I've seen that um, it, it's very difficult for an artist as a one-person show to, to uh, ultimately build a successful career. There's so much um, required um, and, and so much work to be done that, that um, ultimately you're going to need help. And, you know, sure, in, in the early phases of, of an artist's career, sometimes you will be that one person band and, and you're going to be doing the marketing and the promotion and the creation and uh, the shipping and, and everything. And you're going to be pouring, um, y you know, your, your life into to that effort. But ultimately, uh, Barney's right that you get to a point where it's just not going to be possible to do that. And so, um, you know, um, I certainly have observed um, that that most successful artists, um, you know, if they don't have a a life partner or uh, you know, as Barney said, a, a good friend that that can step in and help them run the the, the business, um, kind of the next only logical step you can take is to hire someone and bring someone in to work for you that that can help you get things done. Um, and I, I am sure that for many of you who are struggling to make ends meet and, um, you know, having a hard time, uh, you know, even getting the initial sales going, this idea seems so far removed, the idea that you'd be able to hire someone to help you to have the, you know, that you'd have the funds to be able to do that. Um, but what you'll find is that as, um, you know, you start thinking about what 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 would be most helpful for me to have in terms of of personnel. What could I have someone doing for me that I don't need to be doing myself, um, or that I have uh, I don't have the skills to complete or the time to complete? Um, you realize you can start pretty small, and and even just bringing someone on board part time. You know, at, at uh, you know, even a, a low rate of pay, um, there are going to be people out there who are going to be interested in doing that because they love art. Maybe they're aspiring artists themselves or just love the art community. Um, and, and they'll be willing to work with you, um, uh, you know, for rewards other than, than just pay. And so hiring an assistant, even if it, like I say, if it's just part time can be a great place to, to start just a few hours a week, having them help you get organized. Uh, helping manage your your social media and those kind of things can 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 be a great boon to to your business, um, and it also can help motivate you and push you a little bit. Knowing now, okay, I, not only do I have to sell for myself, but I've got to be able to um, you know push sales along and keep this person busy and and um, obviously be be paying whatever it is that I've committed to pay them. Um, and, and sometimes that, that added motivation can really help you get things done too. And I've seen artists, um, you know, I work with uh, several artists who have progressed from that to having, um, you know, a, a fairly extensive staff of several people working for them. Um, 
know, including a business manager that's full time and a marketing manager and and production managers. Um, so it certainly spans the 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 whole range of possibilities from the one person uh, show to to having many people working for you and and helping you fill it fill in any deficits that you have in in your business. The um you have to open your mind to what's going on. It may not be, it may not even be in your business to begin with. It might be that you are devoting some of your time to doing other things that are really mundane, whether it's shopping or other things um, that aren't related to either making art or marketing art, but still have to get done in your life. And there's a, a website called Fancy Hands dot com f a n c y hands just like it sounds h a n d s dot com and you can subscribe to fancy hands for i think as little as fifty dollars a month and i i believe at fifty dollars a month you get five fifteen minute tasks that are performed by uh, the best person to do it at the time you, they can make reservations for you at a restaurant they can um, do just about anything. I'd go to the site and see what you can find. It might be that you you uh, you trade fifty bucks to get uh, somebody else to do. If you get five tasks at fifteen minutes, an hour and fifteen minutes a month of things that you would have to do yourself. And what's that worth? What could you do with an hour, an hour and a half of time that can you you know progress? Uh, a, a painting or a sculpture along a little further? Can you use that time to contact some galleries or do some research or figure out what you would trade that time off and look for some other ways that, uh, look for somebody else just to relieve you of, of mundane things that have to get done, but there's absolutely no way that, uh, that uh, um, it has to be done by you. So. It's just open your mind up to what the possibilities are and look for ways to trade off. And the other thing, I, I agree with you, Jason. I, I've talked to a lot of artists, and artists who, who think, oh my gosh, I barely, I got my nose just barely above water and you're talking to me about hiring somebody. But you need to get that in your mind now. You should be thinking, well, I want to replace every part of what I'm doing as much as possible other than making my art. Ultimately, that would be the goal where you're making the art and somebody else is doing everything else for you to run the business. You know, if you become Damien Hurst, you even get somebody else to do the painting for you. You just have a, <laughs> you just have a concept and say, I, I make me a spot painting of hearts and sell it for millions. But um, I know we're treading on the unrealistic for most people listening here, but th that's the possibility. Oh. Well, and the idea is that um, it, what you're what you're kind of alluding to here, Barney, is just this whole concept of really thinking of um, you know your art business as a business. Um, and I think that you know, if, if anything, one of the the most valuable things that you can do as an artist is to realize that you know, yes, art is my passion. It's my interest. It's my motivation in life. Um, you know, all of those kind of uh, emotional level things that you think of as art. But then if you can step back and think of it as, okay, it's also a business. And, you know, every business has certain things that have to happen, production and marketing and promotion. And, and um, you know, if, if you begin thinking of it in that way, as, as Barney's saying, um, it, it, it drives you in a different direction than you would have otherwise gone and and um, it allows you to ramp things up to, to build towards the success, which you just, um, you know, you can't get there if you don't have that conscious drive and that conscious decision that I'm moving towards a successful art business. Well, I'll leave this with, I think we should move on, but I'll, I'll, I'll uh, footnote this with a book called The E-Myth Revisited by Michael Gerber, E-Myth revisited by Michael Gerber that's considered one of the foremost books on entrepreneurship. It's, it's there are literally millions of copies. It's been around for probably decades. Um, it, it, one of the central concepts of that book is that the, the people who start businesses and become successful are the, the only ones who are able to grow their businesses are those who are able to let go of things 
and hire somebody else. It, even if somebody is only able to do the job as 60% as good as you can do it yourself, and they can still get it done, and it's, does, and it's not critical, then it's better for them to do that and free your time because over time what will happen is they'll get to do the job better than you're doing it. If it's something that you could hand off, that means it's mundane and somebody else can master it actually better than you can. So um, if you're interested, get that book, Michael Gerber's E-Myth Revisited. It was very eye-opening for me. I'm a control freak. I hate to give up everything, and I realized I'll never grow my business to the level I want to all by myself. I, I'm going to have to employ, employ people in various ways to get to meet all the goals that I have. I, I, have, a, I have a challenge here if we, if we could move on. Sure. Um, I would say think of this as an artist. What, if, what would I do if I had $1,000 to spend or maybe two questions. What would I do if I had $5,000 to spend on marketing? What would you do with that money? I think because it, it was sort of, I, I throw that out there and maybe you should write it down. But I, I, I'm asking you to challenge yourself to think about it because if you, if you, have, if you are stumped by that question, then that means that you're probably just, running um, bill to bill and not really getting yourself ahead. So if you can start thinking about that, it, it puts you in a, we're talking about changing mindsets here. This is another way to change mindsets about how you look at, at money and also it would help you look at what do you, do you, do you really know what kind of marketing I'm talking about using that money for marketing, not taking a vacation or buying a new car, or paying off some bills. If you had money to put, one thousand or five thousand dollars to market your business. What would you do with it? And I think that's a it's a it's a great question. And then once you've got the answer to that, get your one thousand dollars or five thousand dollars and go and and make that uh, that happen. Yeah. Um, and I think that um, you know that that kind of is a, a great segue into to diving in and talking about okay, what 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 then should my direction be and what skills and, and marketing efforts should I be putting my, my time and energy into? Um, and, and as I was kind of preparing for this broadcast and thinking about um, some of the artists that I work with, uh, thinking about, uh, you know, what I've had to do in the gallery to, to um, build some success in it, started thinking about, okay, what are the core marketing skills that, that have come into play that have been um, you know, critical in, in, in helping me do that or helping these other artists do it. Um, and I came up with a short list and Barney, maybe you can, can add to this list and we can kind of just, um, build out from it. Um, you know, and, and there are some of the obvious ones like, uh, you know, skills, I, I would say they even come before you, you can even think about marketing, but there are those skills of creating high quality, consistent artwork, um, you know, if you don't have that, then, then, then you've got nothing to work from. But then once you have that, you've got to, you've got to be able to move out and get that work out in front of people. And to do that, um, you know, some of the skills that, that instantly jump to mind are, uh, you know, your ability to put together a, a marketing plan and strategy and then implement it. Um, your ability to, to manage your finances, your ability to sell, um, salesmanship, um, and, and in this day and age, there also comes the critical skills of being able to um, have some, some web design and development skills, uh, and as well as social media skills. And, um, you know, Barney, uh, maybe we can just talk about those a little bit, or do you have anything else that we should add yeah, to that list that would be critical? I one, one on there that kind of dovetails into the, you know, creating art, and that's production capabilities that not only making art that has a consistency to it so that when people look at it, they realize that it was made by the same artist. It doesn't always have to be the same look or color or subject matter, but that there's something recognizable about it that's, that's attributable to you. Um, but the other part of that is you've got to, if, if you're going to make, become successful, you have, and, and keep the pipeline full, 
you've got to ramp up your production. This is a big problem for a lot of artists who are trying to make that transition, maybe from part-time to full-time or struggling a little bit whether or not getting enough sales. Well, do you have enough art out there in the world? And if you don't, are you making it fast enough? And if not, why not? And what can you do to, in every aspect of that, ramp up, get faster about making work? If you're making one piece a month, you probably can't make a full-time career as an artist. Uh, not unless your marketing is so amazing that you're able to sell it for tens of thousands of dollars. And, right. and uh, you know, again, speaking realistically, that's that's going to be very difficult to do. It is just coming out of the chute, you know, maybe yeah. it's just not real. It's like my, that's the equivalent of buying lottery tickets as a, a retirement plan. It doesn't work. You need to, you need to, you have to put in the work and getting your production up. I think not only forces you into uh, becoming uh, more prolific, but it also makes you a better artist. Anytime you exercise a muscle, you're going to be that that's, you're going to get better at it. So if you make more pieces, you are going to improve your skill more rapidly. There, you'll get the, in, the intangible benefit of improved artistic skill along with I've got more work to get into the pipeline. It's kind of, there's kind of the, there's a law that says uh, work will fill the time allotted to spend on it. And I think it's the other, I think you can turn that around and say art created can find, you know, will fill, the, you'll find enough channels out there if you're busy enough at on the marketing side of it but uh, being able to produce art at a at a um, a good clip is is an extremely important part of that i would add that to that to that great list you just threw out there so production and um so so let's say that we've got uh, an artist listening to to this broadcast um, who is maybe in the very early stages of uh, his or her career um, in terms of how much effort thus far has been put into production. And I, I certainly encounter a lot of artists who maybe have spent years and years creating, but have never been serious about ramping it up to to um, uh, you know to to take it to the level of being a successful business. Um, just in terms of prioritizing and thinking about, okay, where should I first put my my time and efforts and energy as as we're looking at that that skill set, um, you know, I, I'd be interested, Barney, and maybe I'll throw out an idea first, and then you can 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 counter that. Um, but where do you think an artist should begin this process? Um, you know, what would be the first marketing skill that uh, he or she should prioritize. Um, and I, I think this is an interesting question because, um, you know, the answer to this question may have changed over the last 20 years as the internet has come into play um, and the skills required to, to build a successful art business have, have evolved. Um, th that said, I would, I would probably suggest to an artist thinking about, um, uh, how, how can I more successfully market my work? I would think that the first skill that I would suggest that they cultivate would be their salesmanship. Um, the ability to interact, uh, whether it's directly or indirectly with potential buyers um, and, and um, you know, being able to, to successfully persuade those those people to um, buy your artwork or for that matter to to represent your work in in a uh, gallery or to get into a show um, I would think that that sp spending time and energy and, and getting expertise in that area would be a top priority because that's going to spill over into everything else that uh, that you're doing if if you've got a good base of salesmanship um, you can build from that. Uh, your marketing efforts are gonna, going to, um, uh, you know, kind of stem out from that. Your social media, your web design is all going to be focused towards um, towards salesmanship. So, uh, what do you think, Barney? Would you agree? Disagree with that? Do you have another suggestion? I would be hard pressed to disagree with that because it it it's kind of a um, large large topic in some ways. I, I would, in addition. 
you're talking about selling face to face maybe, but you know, there's also on selling online. And oh, absolutely. And in fact, I think, um, I, I would agree that actually initially that, that, uh, not only the face-to-face -face salesmanship, but what you're talking about selling online would, would be a big priority too, understanding the ins and outs of that. It all kind of, it all kind of goes together, but selling online and selling face-to-face, uh, -face, there are some things that are still going to be the same, and, and that's in terms of the presentation and how you, what you say about your art and so forth, and that, that brings up another topic that, that weaves into the marketing aspect of it, and that's copywriting. If, you're, if you learn to be a good salesperson, you are going to learn how to talk well about your art and how to say things that are helpful in terms of influencing people. And those kind of skills lend themselves towards copywriting, which will help you sell more art when you go to put it on line. So I, I would agree with you. Um, sharpen the saw on the sales skills. It, it'll help you in everything that you do in life. And I suppose the other part of the sales thing that a lot of artists miss and small business people in general, and that is that it's a negotiation. And if you can learn some basic negotiation skills, that's not learning how to take advantage of the other person. That's just learning how to make a presentation, know what you want going in, know what you're willing to accept, and how to do that in a way that gets you to yes. In fact, there's a very famous book called, called Getting to Yes that I would recommend if you're interested in learning about negotiation. But everything in life is a negotiation. You negotiate with your spouse over the car that you want to buy or the vacation that you want to take or the night out with the boys that you want. or the, um, You negotiate with your kids. You negotiate with your landlord. You negotiate with the, the trade shows over what booth space. You should be negotiating over advertising rates. It's a, every, Almost everything is negotiable. And the better, the more, the better the negotiator you are, the, the, the more that you're going to add to your bottom line. If you can ring out an extra 5% on, on sales, on your rent, on show space, on advertising, over your career, 5% that you were just given to somebody else because you, you failed to negotiate could add up to tens of thousands or maybe even hundreds of thousands of dollars. And it's free money for you, and it's bottom line money because it, it, every it, when you negotiate five percent, that's coming off the top after you've paid um, all your expenses and taxes to get the money to give to somebody else. So, salesmanship and negotiation skills, right at the top of the list in terms of things that would be extremely important. I'm, I'm really glad you brought that up, uh, Jason, because in, in case of those of you are wondering what that is on my. Uh, bottom third is that's called where it says artist skills and resources that's a shortcut where you can go get a google document that i just put together with some ideas of just sort of brainstorming thoughts on skills and, and resources and i hadn't put that one in there because i was brainstorming when i did it but i've added it in there now now you're not going to be able to edit that you'll only be able to get a copy but then you can get your own copy and make it, all the edits to it that you want. Right, really I, glad you brought that up, Jason. I, I, um, I want to go back to what you mentioned just a minute ago, talking about um, uh, copywriting, because that's an interesting, uh, an interesting skill that uh, a lot of people might not even, and in fact, I would suspect that, that uh, some in our audience today don't even know what copywriting means. Uh, maybe throw out a quick definition of, of what copywriting is. Copywriting is just, is, are, are the words that you use in, in, uh, in print or in uh, digital um, spaces to describe and then influence someone toward making a decision about buying your art or taking uh, you cop it, it, every piece of copywriting should end up with some kind of call to action where you ask somebody to subscribe to um, come to your your event or buy your art so copywriting is just learning how to write and present in a way that is 
most beneficial to you and that the influences the thinking of someone positively toward your product, your art, your service. Well, and I, um, it, that is, is such a valuable skill that uh, I almost have to revise my list and say, um, in some ways, I'd want that write up equal to, to having <laughs> built some salesmanship. Um, you know, in, in this digital age that we're living in and with the ability that we all have to interact and, and share um, copywriting and, and being able to express yourself well and, and even eloquently um, as you're trying to inform people about your work and as Barney said, persuade them to, to some action, um, hopefully ultimately the action of, of purchasing your work. Um, you know, an incredibly powerful tool to have in your tool belt to write, um, you know, briefly and, and persuasively. Um, and, and this would definitely be one of those areas that if you're not, um, you know, confident in your writing skills and specifically in copywriting and in, in writing for, for uh, marketing and, and promotion, um, it would definitely be an area that you, you should either be brushing up on and, and learning some of the techniques of copywriting or that you should be handing off to someone else. And as Barney said, um, earlier, this would be another area where there are a lot of online resources, a lot of writers online that are available to, to, to help you with copywriting or to edit your copywriting to make it more effective. Um, and I know that um, we even see in, in the gallery, we see spillover from um, or, or, or added benefits from copywriting. You know, when we're doing, for example, a, a newsletter or we're putting out an advertisement or a promotional piece, um, the, the effort that we put into copywriting has benefit in whatever that was that we're putting out. But a lot of times that copywriting then comes into our conversation in the gallery and the ideas that we've developed and, and refined in copywriting then come into play in, in our salesmanship in the galleries where we're interacting with customers. And I would, would venture to bet that you could find that same benefit, um, you, you know, if you're at a, an art show or festival and you've you've put together a postcard and, and written a little bit about a piece of artwork, that that writing that you did is going to then come into play um, as you interact with the customer and talk about that piece of artwork. So I'm glad you brought that one up, Barney. We probably should stop complimenting each other on how brilliant we are to bring up these subjects. But um, but yeah, that was I think that that was definitely a great suggestion. <laughs> Well, we talked about this a little bit when we were discussing this topic, and it's it, it's so kind of generic and nebulous that it lends itself toward this sort of thing where, oh, yeah, well, what about this and what about that, where you can just keep adding more th things to the list until there's no time at all to make any art. You just need to market 100% and hope something happens. Just kidding, folks. I, you, you do need you need balance in your life, but... Um, having some copywriting skills, or that could be one of those things where um, I don't know that Fancy Hands does copywriting, but there you can get copywriting done on Fiverr.com, F-I-V-E-R-R.com, or Odesk, O-D-E-S-K, or Elance.com. Um, there's there's dozens of places you might trade some services for somebody. If you're good at something else, maybe you're a photographer as well as being an artist and you can trade some photography for copywriting or something like that. Look for some ways where you can barter some services with somebody. If, if you're, if that's not in your wheelhouse and it's really not something that you you have any interest in trying to get better at, then that would be one of those things that you want to get off your plate as quickly as possible and onto the plate of somebody else who can really do a bang up job for you on it so um i would selling direct and you know being able to being comfortable talking to people about your art that kind of lends itself into networking and i don't know that that's necessarily a skill i guess it is we could go into that path i didn't have it on this list there's probably some other things that we should uh, go into you know when you first mentioned that jason my thought was um, building an email list, uh, learning how to create and build an email list and then knowing what to do with it is, in my opinion, 
a very high level skill that you should be working on or um, tasking out to somebody else. Because ultimately, and it's something you should be working on, um, you know, pretty quickly. It's it's something that should be developing very early in the process of of getting your work out there because it takes time to build a good email list. So I, I think again, another great suggestion um, to to be working on those skills. And you know, we say you should have the skill of being able to to build and and manage and administer an email list and. And and I know that there's some complexity to that. Figuring out what um, you know, what platform to use for your email uh, list and and newsletters, um, how to format the emails, and and uh, you know sometimes there's some rudimentary coding involved in doing that. So it really is a a skill that that needs to be developed and um, you, you know built on. And you're just talking there about the you know the kind of the, the back end or maybe the content creation side but there's also skills in terms of what how some people are seem to be much more adept at being able to get email addresses than others so what are they doing that you're not doing and if if you see that if you've got to in if you're an artist and you've got a circle of friends and somebody's got a mailing list that's four times as big as yours and you've been roughly in doing the business together, you know, the same time, then they're doing something that you're not and you need to find out what that is. Where are they getting their names from? Are they getting great signups at shows? Are they, are they running Facebook contests or, you know, whatever it is that they're doing, there's, there's literally hundreds of ways that you can get email addresses, but email, in my opinion, is the most important asset in terms of marketing that an artist can have, other than your direct personal relationships with buyers and collectors that you already have. An email list is your one-to-one -one relationship that nothing can interfere with. Facebook can go out of business or change it, change its terms of service and become an uh, un unfavorable place for you to be in, or galleries can shutter for whatever reason. All kinds of third-party distribution channels can go away from you. That won't affect none of those things happening. Affects your personal relationships or the your your email list. So that's your your go-to way of of creating opportunities for you to sell more art directly, which is going to be most profitable and more importantly keep you in control and and, and sort of inoculated against the 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 things that happen out there that that knock the pins out underneath some artists who they've got all their they're making a, they're making bank on eBay or Pinterest or something and all of a sudden uh, Etsy is a perfect example of that there's been a lot of angst over changes that Etsy's made recently that's just upset the apple cart for all kinds of uh, artists and crafters that were doing well there and now they're not and they're upset about it understandably but they put themselves in that position. If you have a good email list, you still want to be on Etsy, but now you're not just completely knocked out um, when Etsy goes away because you've still got your email list, which should be your primary way of selling art. So building an email list is top priority, right I'll up there with selling skills. I'll throw a, another um, uh, skill marketing skill that's been very important and valuable to us and and that and it builds from your email marketing social media and that is um uh, nurturing your contacts and your leads being able to basically being able to turn a lead into a customer um, and nurturing that along and that includes um you know, it is accomplished through follow-up and, and relationship building, as, as Barney was just talking about. And so, you know, again, thinking about the skills that you could have in, in your arsenal, um, lead nurturing and, and relationship building um, would, would be another huge um, uh, skill that I would consider to be vital to your ability to, to be successful at marketing your work. So that's a, that comes under the... Well, there's a little bit of copywriting in there, a little bit of project planning in there, and a little bit of um, just having having a, 
a game plan for what you want to do. If, if you get a new email subscriber, what are you going to do with that? I, Clint Watts and I um, read once a couple of years ago, he was talking about, he went on a couple of dozen artist sites that had email lists and signed up just to see what would happen. And I think in 23 out of 24, what happened was nothing. Nobody sent a thank you for signing up to my email list. They just, you, they went on the list and at some future date, they're going to get some random email from that artist. And what he was just trying to point out was what a wasted effort. You, you put the opt-in form, maybe you had some kind of lead magnet that made the person, you know, do, say they were going to do something. I guess you wouldn't because you would have gotten, um, hopefully a response about the lead magnet. A lead magnet would be sign up and I'll give you some note cards or I'll give you a discount on a, on your, your next job or free framing or whatever the case might be that would entice somebody to, to give you. But if you're going, if you're going to attract new customers, new buyers, uh, or even just interested prospects, you should have a plan for what to do. What's, what do I do with them? Now that I've gotten this email list, I think you should be sending them some kind of an indoctrination series of emails. You'll never have a, you'll never have a more interested subscriber than the one who just said, yes, I want, I send me some information. So send them two or three emails right away and let them know. I, I'm not going to send you the email. I, this is just us getting to know each other. I'm not going to keep sending you emails at this rate, but right now I, I have this information I want to get out to you whatever the case might be, then that's again where good copywriting skills can help you, but set the pace or set the tone early with your email or live, like Jason was saying, well, how do you follow up? What do you, what do, you do with people once they show interest or once, once they purchase? I, I think I sense, Barney, uh, an opportunity in what you were just talking about uh, for another broadcast. So I think, <laughs> I think we should make a note about that, how to, uh, you know how to how to have an interaction a, a successful interaction with someone who's just signed up for your mailing list um, I think we could easily do a, a, an entire session on that yeah and it wouldn't necessarily even have to be a mailing list it could be somebody who um, you know I think any if you had an interaction with a potential buyer if you met somebody um, whether it's you're out networking somewhere you're on an art walk, you're, you're at a show, maybe it's not even your show, you exchange business cards. What do you do with that? If you're like most people, you get a business card and you put it in a drawer and never even think about it again. You have good intentions for about 30 seconds and then it goes away. And it goes in the drawer until you feel so guilty you just throw it away. Or you have a giant Rolodex of cards that you've never done anything on. So there's, there are better ways to do that. Uh, we could get into your um, blog post that you wrote recently about uh, you're not mailing your customers enough. But that's uh, we're go we're, read the blog post. <laughs> it's on Red Dot Blog, folks, and it's not. It was only within the last sixty days, probably. Um, excellent post, and I guarantee you that ninety nine percent of you are not mailing your customers enough. Um, Let's move on and see. Do we have some uh, other? Um, you know, I I would just throw up about a couple of additional suggestions, various that you want to focus on. I'd include at least, and I'm sorry, Barney, I am getting echo now. And some pretty wicked feedback from me. Yeah, I I, I think it's I think it's gone now. Um, the, the other uh, items that I was going to suggest are, are at least a rudimentary understanding of, um, well, at least some rudimentary web skills, um, you know, to be able to effectively post your artwork online, um, to be able to talk about your artwork online, put up texts, and, and as we were talking about copywriting, to be able to have the uh, ability to figure out how to do that. And whether that's you creating your own site, which I in most cases don't recommend unless you have a, a high level of skill there. 
um, or if you're using a template site, even, even in using a template site, it's still going to be beneficial for you to understand some of the underlying mechanics of, of how the, the internet works. And, and um, you know, I know you're going to say, oh, I just, I, I can't learn that, um, you know, say the words HTML or CSS and, and I just run in the other direction. Um, but even though you may never actually get your hands dirty doing any of that code, if you could at least understand what's happening, it's going to, to really open up, um, you know, a whole new understanding of, of what's possible on the internet and, and even just give you the, the, give you ideas of what you need to have someone come in and help you do. And so, um, you know, picking up a, uh, HTML for beginners book, um, or, or something, uh, HTML for dummies kind of book and, and getting at least a sense of what's possible, um, and, and what's required to, to code and, and to, to, to write HTML would be very beneficial to, to you and your marketing process. Let me throw in, let me throw in, uh, how I learned it. Um, back in the day when I was working, um, tech support at, uh, GoDaddy, there were times when we had lull periods during the holidays, especially. They usually had a time where we didn't have a long time between calls, but there were times when we might have 30, 40 minutes between calls. I spent a lot of time on a site called W3Schools. I believe it's .com. It could be .org. W3Schools, either .com or .org. And you can go there and start. It, it will take you through... Uh, lesson by lesson on how to learn HTML or in my case now I don't know all the HTML I need to know but if I want to add a column or put in do something put in a, a colored border behind something I can just go to go to go to W3 schools and search for that and it'll take me to to an, an exercise where it explains exactly what to do shows you the code and then it has a little box that says try it and it actually gives you the, a, a box where you can write in the code yourself and see what happens. It's fantastic. And it's at, you know, the very best price, free. It, you can go there and learn HTML, HTML5, CSS, PHP, all free. Can't beat it. But it, it, it will probably take you um, three to four hours maybe, and you, would get, you could get a rudimentary like Jason was talking about understanding of HTML, which if you're trying to build your own website or even asking somebody else to do it for you, there are going to be times when you want to do something and that person isn't going to be available to you. If you at least know where to go on some a place like W3 Schools and look up how to do this and then go through the exercise so that you can do it yourself, um, you will save yourself an enormous amount of, uh, excuse me, an enormous amount of time. So huge resource for you. And I, let me throw one other out there because we've been talking a lot about writing. I wrote about this book um, a few months ago called Art Write. And the word write is W-R-I-T-E. I highly recommend it. I think it's only five bucks in Kindle and $4.99. It's the best book on writing for artists I've ever read, bar none. Easy to read, some very easy to follow um, formulas and, and exercises that will help you wrap your head around how to write the important things as for being an artist. So W3 Schools and Art Write, you'll be glad you did both of those. And so, um, and, and we're quickly, uh, again, running to the end of our time here, but as, as, you know, as you look at your, your art business and, and you think about marketing and, and promoting yourself and, and all of the skills that are required, um, I think that the balance to this that we, we haven't gotten into yet are, are kind of also looking at uh, the resources that you have available to you. Um, and in essence, what those resources, uh, what those resource allocations allow you to do is to figure out how you should prioritize your, your efforts and your time. Um, and if you, uh, you know, for many of you, as you, you look at um, 
the resources that you have available to it. And the main ones that, that I would, would consider important in this discussion would be the time you have available um, and the funds or finances that you have available to you. Um, and what tends to happen to an artist who's, who is, you know, early in the struggle and, and is, is trying to, to get the beginnings of the business off the ground, often it's the case that funds, you know, money is not uh, highly available to you. You don't have a lot of uh, access to, to cash. And, and so therefore you have to really devote a lot of time and, and effort and energy. And, and you're, you are potentially going to be doing a lot of the work um, on your own because you have more time than money available to you. But what a lot of artists find is that as your career progresses, the time becomes much more precious to you. And, and um, uh, as, the, as you begin to get more and more sales, um, you'll, you'll then be able to, as we were talking about earlier, bring people in to help to free up your time. And, and now um, that, that time becomes the, the priority. And so, um, you, you know, as you, you think about um, what is it that I'm going to be doing in, in the next six months in terms of my marketing, um, it, it's important to not only think about what is my plan, what, what do I want to be accomplishing with my marketing, um, and how am I going to get there? But also be thinking about, okay, what 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 realistic resources do I have available to me? What's my time and what's my money? Uh, and how are those going to fit into accomplishing my goals and, and, and implementing this marketing plan? Good, good suggestions, Jason. Um, I've got a question here from um, one of our readers. I'd like to toss out and see what you think about it. I think you might have a better on the idea on this than me. That's from Susan Danberg. She wants to know, what does a quality professional introductory portfolio look like? What are the nicest materials and where are they sourced? Yes, um, I, th that is, a, a, it's a great question and um, it probably takes us down a, another avenue that we could, could do a, a broadcast on. But, but to give the short version of that, um, the format of a, of a portfolio is changing pretty dramatically. And again, kind of coming back to this idea of developing your marketing skills, I can see several that would come into play here. And we didn't even really talk about uh, one of them, and that is to having some, some graphic design skills. Um, you know, and again, at a very basic level, being able to um, place images in a document and, and move them around. and and to create balance in, on the pages that you're creating um, are gonna be, become huge in your ability to build a, a successful portfolio. And what I have seen over the last few years, especially as everyone now has access to an iPad um, or some other tablet or even the large phones, I'm seeing a lot of portfolio shifting to a digital format. Um, I would say, you know, of the of all of the portfolios that I've reviewed in in say the last six months, um, it seems to me that a, at least half of them, and probably a little more than half, are not in any kind of physical format now. They are being submitted to me digitally. So either the artist is emailing the portfolio to me, or they're standing in the gallery with an iPad or or an iPhone or or some other um, digital device, sharing the portfolio. And I think that. Um, uh, you know, like it or leave it, that's the way of the future, um, that, that everything is moving digital. And, and not to say that you absolutely have to go out if you don't have uh, access to, to a device. Um, you know, certainly you can still print a, a portfolio. There are some um, online printing services. Maybe, Barney, uh, you might have a suggestion of, of where online printing is, is best done. I know you've mentioned some in the past. Um, not really for portfolios. I, you know, I would, uh, if you're doing something like Fine Art America, they, they, they will allow you to create uh, PDFs of all of your art, which you can then, you know, download and take to uh, any kind of uh, FedEx or I guess they don't call them Kinkos anymore or um, local, just your local um, Office Max or Staples and get them reproduced there, but I'm, I'm in favor of just digital personally. I think, I think uh, killing a bunch of trees is not, there are a few galleries out there 
or anyone else that has to see something that's still just a reproduction. The, the quality that you see on a, on a tablet these days is so good that somebody would get a very good idea. I know you, I'm sure, we can make value judgments, Jason, on what you see on a digital file, on an iPad, or even online for that matter. That, sure. That just, I, wouldn't, I would just put that out of your mind because it's, it's a whole other thing where you're spending time and money and resources on, on uh, past technology. Just go get a, if, if an iPad is too expensive for you, you can get an inexpensive uh, uh, Android tablet for a couple of hundred bucks or maybe even less. That will do just as good a job of, of presenting the work for you. So I, I would do, tell you to shy away from uh, trying to build up a portfolio in, in, uh, in print form. It's, it's, uh, it's spending time on technology that it's going to be outdated. And the other thing about those kind of portfolios, or unless everything's loose leaf, um, if things change so fast, you, you can't update them and keep them. Uh, you, you, you just can't update them fast enough. It doesn't make any sense to me. Don't go there. I've got a question from uh, Diane Eukster, and she says, I've stepped out of the roller coaster of gallery representation this year. My goal in 2015 is to be seen and heard on the internet. I have my paintings in two online gallery sites, have Pinterest boards for my art, write a weekly art blog, post my blog post to Facebook weekly, uh, am I going in the right direction? And do you think it's possible to develop a collector following totally online? I've sold about 12 paintings online this year, but they've all been smaller sizes. Yes, you, you can do that. But um, I, would, I would tell you, augment that with um, local marketing. The, the, the fact is the easiest people to sell are the people that you know. Most people know 150 to 200 people. You probably, if you look at the 200 people that you know, only a small percentage of them have ever seen your art or even know that you're an artist who has art to sell. And if you're, if you're not working that market, why, why are you out trying to sell to total strangers? I'm not opposed to selling to total strangers, but get behind selling people who are easy to sell in the next group of people who are next to you is to sell are the people who uh, those people know. So your friends and family and associates, those people, if they can refer you to somebody, maybe they don't like your Southwest art because it doesn't fit their abstract motif, but they might know a dentist who's doing his office who's left Southwest art and can refer you. Uh, so let me put it this way, whether you're online or offline, it's not about how much activity you have. It's about the relationships that you make. The people who are successful online that I've observed have the same traits of people who are successful offline, and that is they are building direct one-on-one -on -one relationships with people. They've made it personal. People buy art is an emotional sale. People buy because they like you, because they like your art. They don't it's people rarely just come out of the blue and see your art online and buy it. That happens once in a while, but you can't build a business on that. You can build a business if you get enough collectors to buy from you. I just uh, was doing some numbers and, and ran through this. If, if you're, if you're, um, if you have a hundred collectors and they, and your average price is $1,500 and you net 750, on each sale, and I realize these are just grabbing numbers, but not unrealistic. Um, and you sell them over the course of a lifetime, three pieces. That means that collector is worth about twenty two hundred and fifty dollars to you, in in the um, as a lifetime value of that collector. Well, if you have a hundred collectors, that's two hundred and twenty five thousand dollars. So. You have to think of it in those terms, building relationships with people who are going to buy your art and buy multiple pieces of your art. That's how you become successful. Just spinning your wheels on a lot of activity in social media and online will, will be frustrating for you, in, in my humble opinion. Well, and I think that um, uh, Diane's comment that uh, she's only sold smaller pieces 
Um, I think this is pretty typical of uh, of the kind of cold um, online marketing efforts that that you're talking about, Barney. Is that um, you know until someone trusts you and and knows you, they're going to be less likely to spend a, a lot of money with you. And so um, it, it is hard. It's again, as Barney said, it's not impossible. And certainly, there are stories you read stories all the time of artists who have found success marketing and selling their work online. Um, but but just realize it's going to take some real um, energy and effort on your part to to build towards that. And I agree with Barney that um, you know working on on building a uh, relationships with with people that you are physically have the ability to I interact with or with whom you have relationships or recommendations is going to be far more effective. I've got uh, a couple of other questions, and and some of them are a little bit specific, but I think they point to skills that that would be valuable in terms of marketing. And and we didn't touch on this one. Um, uh, Don, nope, not Donna. Just kidding. Uh, this is Bia who asks this question. She asks any advice on how to photograph artwork, and I don't want to get into specific advice about how to photograph artwork because again, that would be a, 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 a another direction entirely but incredibly val valuable for you to have um, the ability to photograph your artwork well. Um, and again, just like copywriting and, and just like having the ability to, to uh, manage your, your web presence, having the ability to get good quality images of your work is going to be uh, an incredibly powerful marketing um, skill for you to develop. And, um, you know, I, I don't, I, I would not hesitate at all to tell you that um, it would be worth your while to go to a community college class and take a photography course or to take a photography course from a, uh, uh, a MOOC, uh, you know, a massive online course uh, that uh, there are actually quite a few of them out there um, where you can just sign up online, take the course for free, and, and the instructor will guide you through the steps of understanding your camera and, and you know, what aperture is and f-stop and all those kinds of things. Um, and, and again, having at least a, a good working understanding of those principles is going to be incredibly valuable to you in your marketing efforts. Again, might be, coming, might be something that you'd uh, look at uh, bartering in some way too. My friend Dick Harrison, who co-wrote the book, How to Sell Art to Interior Designers, uh, with me, was an all, also an artist himself. And he bartered with artists for uh, dental services. He took cruises. He got financial planning. He, he probably bartered tens of thousands, maybe even hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of uh, art in return for services. So. If it's not something that's in your strong suit and you want to get it done and you know, you've know you got art as inventory, look at seeing if you can't uh, make a trade instead of um, having to learn that new skill that you might only use occasionally. I don't know. It depends on, depends on how often you need to get your, your work uh, photographed. If, if you're thinking about it from the print market, then in my opinion, you need to you need to find somebody who does professional image capture, not not the not photography. Image capture is a completely different way of grabbing um, images. And we're out of time here. So well, yeah, we've done it again. We've uh, burned <laughs> through this this hour, um, but of course we will be back here um, uh, same time, same channel, second Tuesday of uh, July. Um, it worked out. Last year, I think we missed a month because of vacations, but uh, at least for my schedule, I'm kind of slipping in between our sessions. So I'll be here uh, that, that second week of July. And, and I think, Bernie, you said you're here too. So, yes, uh, so I'm looking forward to it. With, uh, even though we, I don't know that we could say what the schedule what it, It's probably on our schedule. But I just don't know what the topic will be. It will be amazing, whatever it is, I <laughs> promise. So um, I, uh, I, I encourage anyone who it has topics that we haven't covered or haven't covered in depth enough to uh, let either Jason or myself know about it. Uh, we'd love to hear from you in terms of, you know, give us some ideas for what you'd like to do. Uh, we're kind of in a vacuum here in some ways. So love to hear from you on those. 
And as always, it is, uh, it's great to have all of you with us. Uh, we'll look forward to hearing your feedback, uh, what you found most interesting on this, this conversation. Um, and of course, look forward to seeing you all here uh, next month. Uh, thanks so much, Barney. It's been a pleasure spending a few minutes with you here. Absolutely, Jason. Peace out, everybody. See you next month. See you, everyone.